sorry you're at your service. Oh my goodness. Dude, what are you doing on my screen? Back up, Mr. Wood. Dude, I'm, dude, dude, you need to get off my screen. Okay, Mr. Beaver, what are you thinking about? Alright, time to move you, my friend. Maybe we'll just shrink you down. Here we go. Shrinky, shrinky, shrinky. Okay, there you go. We'll let you hang up there. You're kind of cool, actually. You're a very interesting little animal, my friend. Yeah. Okay, we'll leave you right up there. Here we go. Hey, my friends, welcome to another video. This is the second video of the review, test, chapter, review for chapter three. Let's go ahead and get started. We have the school here is 3.65 miles from Tanya's house and 1.28 miles from Jamal's house. Okay, how much farther from school is Tanya's house than Jamal's house. Explain how you can use a quick picture to solve the problem. A quick picture. Okie dokie, so you mean I can't just solve it using my algorithm. I would like to do that. I, I could definitely show a picture. I think this the advantage of putting that picture up there is just modeling with mathematics. And when we model with mathematics, it makes things much easier. So I'll go ahead and do that because I know I have something hidden behind here. Where are you? Dun, dun, dun. Hey, pretty cool, huh? I didn't know he was in disguise. My secret white box. Bye, Beaver. Oh, okay. So we're going to leave you up there. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and represent like GoMath uses these type of manipulatives. So where we could show, for example, um, so we have three boxes. We could show that as our three holes okay for the miles we need six of these okay now you see our five so we have our three holes our six tenths and then our five hundredths we could also represent this would be for Tanya's house now let's go ahead and represent the distance that Jamal's house is from the school well here's our one here's our two tenths okay now you can see that we have our eight our eight hundredths and with this problem when you think about understanding what operation with every single math problem that we ever get there's really just four operations that we can look at right we have addition subtraction right you started with addition when you're in primary then you move into subtraction a little bit more difficult with the regrouping and so forth or renaming and then you move into multiplication and division and at this point we should be able to read this problem and understand what operation do we need to attack well here because they use the word how much farther subtraction because we're comparing one distance to another so here if we have Tanya's distance and then Jamal's we're going to want to subtract so what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract so I could take away I could take one away here from this one hole because that's what we're asking, we're going to subtract that distance. I also have two tenths here that I can take away. I'm going to take those two away, which means I need to take two tenths away from here. Now here comes the problem. Here we have eight hundredths, here we only have five hundredths. So that's a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert one of these tenths. So you can see here what I've done is I've taken one of these and I've shown that I can take that one tenth and make ten hundredths. What I need to do here is I need to go ahead and take one away. I'm just going to delete it. I had six. Okay. Now I'm going to only have five here now because I have these ten. So I'm going to come up here and show you. I'm just quickly group these and bring them down here. So now I have the ten plus I have the five. Now I need to take away eight hundredths from that. What we have now here is fifteen hundredths. Okay, so I have 8 here. I'm going to go ahead and show that I've taken 8 from the 15. That would eliminate that. So, of course, this is the quantity of the 1 and 28 hundredths. I'm taking away from the 3 and 65 hundredths. What am I left with? Well, I'm left with 2 holes. I'm left with 1, 2, 3 tenths. And I'm left with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 hundredths. Here we go. So, then... That was my quick picture. So let me go ahead and write something up here and describe everything that we did. So the answer was 2.37, and the unit of measure was miles, 
Okay, I didn't do it in exactly this order, but here's my answer. Now I drew, uh, I definitely drew the model here for 3.65s using three squares, four ones, six lines for tenths, and the five circles for hundreds. And I did the same thing for the one in 28, and I showed it here. It's a little, I had to make it all fit here. You can see that up here, I actually regrouped the one tenth over here into ten hundredths, and I just subtracted it in a different order. But I think that makes sense. Okie dokie, let's move on, my friends. It says here, a vet measured the mass of two birds. The mass of the robin was 76 and 64 hundredths grams. The mass of the blue jay was 81.54 grams. Estimate the difference in the masses of the birds. Okay, so we're just doing, so the key word here is estimate. An estimate is your best guess when we look at numbers. And when I look at this one here, I'm going to want to round this off to probably the nearest whole number. If we're going to estimate, because we don't want numbers that we're going to have to add or subtract uh, that are going to be difficult to do mentally. We want to have numbers that are easy. And here, 77, I would say, would be the way to round that one. And then over here, we have 81.54. I'd probably round that off to 82. Looking at the difference, very easy to come up with five, five grams, because that's something you can do in your head. Three more to get to 80 plus two, the way that I looked at that one there. Here it says Rick bought five yogurt bars at a snack shop. Each yogurt bar cost $1.75. It says complete the table to show the price of two, three, four, and five yogurt bars. So this is just simple addition here, right? We have our $1.75. Now if we double that, I, I kind of like it. If you look at 75 cents here, this is just how my mind's working. Okay, I know 75 and 75 together is $1.50. So I think what I would do is I'm looking at that right away, saying, okay, if I'm going to add on another 75, that's $1.50 plus the dollar. Okay, that's going to make two. So that's going to make 350. Okay, and now I'm just in my mind. Now, probably the best thing is maybe to take the algorithm and do the algorithm here. So if we have $3.50. We're going to add on another $1.75. I mean, I know that we could probably do this mentally. $5.25. And we keep adding on. The 25 and the 75, that's kind of nice because that's going to make another whole plus your ones. You're six, so you're going to end up having $7 even. And then finally, you add in $1.75 on that. That's pretty easy too. Okay, now it says Clayton Road is 2.25 miles long. Wood Pike Road is 1.8 miles long. Keisha used a quick picture to find the combined length of Clayton Road and Wood Pike Road. Does Keisha's work make sense? Explain why or why not. All right. So when we use that word right there, combined length, that should be when we were talking about that order of operation, you should be thinking addition because we're adding them together. So here we have two. I see that from the two holes from the 2.25. That looks like that could be the two tenths. And then I do see five hundredths here. So right here and below looks like to me, like we would have Clayton Road. And up here, it says the 1.8. So here I can see my one. I'm sorry, I see five. One, two, three, four, five plus three is eight. 1.8. All right, that looks good. So just from that standpoint, all of this does appear to be this right here. And I'm going to try to do a circle around it. There we go. Right here seems to be Woodpike Road. Okay, so to combine these together, now I have eight and I have two. So it looks like that what Keisha has done is she's taken her eight here and her two, uh, and these are tenths. So she took those 10 tenths and she made one more hole up here, which means that she would have one, two, three, four, and then she, she doesn't have any more tenths now, and she has five hundredths. So that looks good to me. Does Keisha's work make sense? I would say yes. She, she regrouped or renamed the 10 tenths as one, uh, one or one whole and added that one whole to the whole number. So I'm going to go ahead and write those notes, my understanding here in the box. Okay, so here we go. So, so yes, uh, it looks like he should regrouped or rename the 10 tenths as one whole, uh, as one one, I'm sorry, or one whole. And then she added that one to the three ones, giving us four and five hundredths. 
Okie dokie. Let's go on to the next page. Da, da, da. Yes, oh, went too far to come back, Mr. Wara. It says Bob and Ling are playing a number pattern game. Okay. And Bob wrote the following sequence. Sequence, just in order of items, right? Sequence. What is the unknown term in the sequence? And when we use the word term, we just mean the actual like number, a term is a, it can be a number. So here's one term, here's another term, here's a term. We need to find out what goes in there. Well, we need to look for like some kind of pattern because this is what it says. It's called a number pattern game. Well, if I'm looking at 28, oops, let me try that again, 28.9. If I were to subtract only because 26 is smaller, I'm just kind of curious what I might get. If I subtract, I'm going to get one. Don't forget the decimal, remember? Bring it down. That's right. Bring it on down. Bring it on down. Okay, and then that's a two. So we end up with two point one. Now what I'm interested to see is the will that pattern continue? And I'm just taking a guess here. I don't really know. I know the numbers are getting smaller. They seem like they're getting smaller in about that quantity. And of course eight minus seven is one and then six minus four is two. So now you see we pretty much established that that's the pattern. So the 2.1 being the difference between each one of these terms and the pattern being that the number is uh, 2.1 less from each term previous, then it would be safe that we could take 24, right, 0.7, and also, and then just subtract 2.1. That's what the difference is between each one of those terms. Now we're going to get 6. Now we get 2. Now we get 22.6, which I'm assuming that's what this box is for. Of course, we could always double check our work. Let's take off one more 2.1 to see if we get that final term. And that's 5. The decimal, bring it on down. That's right. And then you get 0, and then 2, 20.5, and that works out so nicely. Yes, that's why I like my math, my friends. This is Rafael but 2. 0.15 pounds of potato salad and 4.2 pounds of macaroni salad to bring to a picnic. All right. For numbers 13a through 13c, select yes or no to indicate whether each statement is true. Well, if we were to it says rounded to the nearest whole number, Rafael bought two pounds of potato salad. Well, if we were going to round two point, then let me come over here. So if we're going to round 2.15 to the nearest whole number, when we round numbers, to the nearest whole number, that's the ones place. So we kind of underline the number that we're looking to round. I always like to kind of draw an arrow for teaching purposes, of course, to run that arrow to the to the digit to the right of that number you're going to round. Here it said to round to the nearest whole number, so that's what I've done. The one is going to let the two know what you're going to do. He's either going to stay the same, he's going to remain a two, or He's going to go up one. That's the only two things he could do. He, he's going to stay a two or he's going to go to a three. And when you look at comparing, you can see that 2.1, one is so close to two. So he's going to stay the same. But we always say, we can say zero to four, right? We let it rest, five or more up the score. Or it's four or less, let it rest. Get the rhyming. Oops. Four or less, let it rest. Five or more up the score. So because he's a one, the two is going to stay the same. But that means that every digit to the right, this automatically turns to zero. So we end up with two. So yes, he bought two pounds. That would be true, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's a two. Round it to the nearest whole number. Rafael bought four pounds of macaroni salad. Again, we're looking at that whole number. The two is four or less. Let it rest. So yes, that's going to be four. And the two just turns into zero. Rounded to the nearest tenth, Rafael bought 2.1 pounds of potato salad. Now, if we look at 2.1, they have our same number here. Um, we're going to round to the nearest tenth. So this time, we're actually underlining the one, and we're looking to the right. But here we have five, and five or more says we're going to up the score, which means our potato salad to the nearest tenth is actually going to be 2.2. That one is going to up to two because the five is letting us know you need to up the score. He's going to go up by one. So is that true? No, that is not true. It should be 2.2. Okay, okay. Let's bring it on down. Hey, last action here. The four highest scores on the floor exercise at a gymnastics meet were 
9.325, and 9.5 points. All right. Choose the numbers that make the statement true. The lowest of these four scores was, well, the lowest, since they all have the nine in the ones place, we have ourselves a four-way tie. So let's go ahead and take a look at the tenths place. Here we have a six. He would be high two. Ooh, that's lower, so he'd want that one, two. Here we have a three. Sorry, you're out of the running here. You have a five. So 9.25 is our winner for the lowest of these four scores. Now, it says the highest of these four scores was, well, again, we still have all those nines, but here, look, we have a six in the tenths place, and there isn't any other numbers that have a six in the tenths place. Therefore, that's the highest, and that's how we compare decimals. My friends, this video is like, whew, it like flew by. But you know, there's always another video just waiting, lurking, that's right, lurking around the corner. So, my friends, please live long and prosper.